Hey Chris, what are you doing here in Toronto? Um, well, actually, I was up here for a, a partner visit, um, but uh, took some time out to have uh, a little bit of lunch. Of course, you always have to have your laptop when you have lunch, so uh, pretty much standard day at the office. All right. So, what do you what do you do uh, at IBM, Chris? Well, um, I actually have a fair bit of focus on the. Uh, Developer audience. I focus on developer initiatives. Um, so uh, any anything that involves developers, uh, I work with uh, our data server marketing team to, to help reach um, that audience. And so I, I'm one myself. I'm very good at it, of course. That's why I market. <laughs> All right, sounds good. So when you say you're focusing on the developer audiences, um, I assume you do a lot of work with. Um, SOA and Web 2.0, is, is that right? Yeah, um, one of the things that uh, in in the industry at large, Web 2.0 is certainly catching a lot of attention, and certainly SOA is. And, um, it's not surprising that they are together because they're, they're not that different. And they're based on very similar standards, uh, TCP IP, HTTP, uh, XML, of course. And what we're seeing is... Uh, uh, effectively a convergence um, with these technologies because they're so similar and so when, when you think SOA you, you don't immediately think uh, 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 technology that can actually go to a cell phone but there are technologies that you can use SOA approaches to uh, mobility right down to grassroots which really is where Web 2.0 really is, is uh, growing from and um, again the the, the really exhilarating thing is the way people are taking it. So um, the one thing I do think, though, is that people looking at um, at the web service side of SOA, you can actually uh, look at that as uh, breaking things down as a service. And I think what we'll see is, is uh, Web 2.0 communities adopting those types of things, and, and web services are going to really drive forward um, that as a development point of view. And so... We at IBM need to really focus on uh, web services, uh, particularly as, as uh, database servers. All right. Um, can you tell us how, how all of this fits in with DB2? Sure. Uh, DB2 um, obviously uh, has a, a few tools around it, um, and I'll talk a, a little bit about that. The, there's, but there's two aspects of web services. There's the consumption aspect as well as the... Uh, publishing. So, um, looking at the uh, at the real key aspect of, of publishing, you want to focus on your data. Um, and for uh, developers, um, being able to point and click at the data is a big win for them. And uh, whether that's a stored procedure or a simple table uh, or view, um, being able to just point and click and publish is, is really ideal. Um, saves a lot of time and, and pain and encoding stuff that's really in the grand scheme of things, very routine. So um, with, uh, when you look at uh, DB2's uh, tools with respect to, for example, .NET, if you uh, install uh, DB2 with the .NET environment, you'll see that you can right-click on tables such as uh, views and uh, store procedures and be able to publish the, the operations um, through either WebSphere or Microsoft's IIS. And again, it's just point and click, a couple seconds, and and all of a sudden you've got a web service that you can consume elsewhere. Um, in the case of uh, PHP, actually that's something I've been uh, working with uh, at the lab here, and we have a Web 2.0 starter toolkit, which uh, eventually um, will be able to see, show the public, but uh, I'm excited about it because it gives you that same paradigm with the PHP environment. And so you can put that in with uh, Zen Core for IBM, be able to uh, publish your data uh, with, again, simple point and click. Um, and of course, uh, uh, the uh, Java world should not be remiss, and we can also mention uh, that there's upcoming technology um, with the uh, developer workbench, uh, data server developer workbench, such that uh, you can, again, uh, without any coding, publish your data. And that gives you an, the ability to focus on the data requirements for uh, your clients, your, your uh, internal folks, whoever it may be. In the case of cons consuming, uh, most people don't think about a database server consuming uh, web services, but in fact, DB2 can. And um, so uh, whether it be a store procedure, trigger, um, or, 
or user defined function, you can consume web services um, and that gives you a lot of power as a developer to solve problems in a creative way. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need an application server necessarily if you can do it in a database. So again, the architect can sort of say, well, this logic belongs in the database or it belongs in the app server and have the ability to be able to switch if need be. And, um, and I think that's a big win um, for developers.